in the discipleship survey. We're still getting some of these back.
Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. And you. And the Lord bless you. Bless you. Bless you. These ministers, thank you for your encouragement. Your presence is an encouragement. Thank you. And uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. To this wonderful pastor. And what a beautiful family. Yes, 17 years. It's pretty good. pretty good. <laughs> and uh, how has it been, Sister Britt? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> As the boy said, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> ah, yeah. There's a lot in that. Ah. Smiles, some happiness, enjoyment. Mm. Ah. <laughs> and a little of the other stuff too. It's all in that. Ah. <laughs> God bless you. Yes, and these, these lovely, lovely children. And this pastor, I know what it's like. I know what it's like. But there are shoes for each one of us. Yeah. And they're, they're different. Hmm. Some similarity, but different. And you are a good fit it appears, for Kane Avenue. Good fit. Good fit. Fittings like that, they're not accidents. Fittings like that, the Holy Spirit has a whole lot to do with. Yeah. Yeah. And when the spirit is in the fitting, the outcome may not be the way I would like the outcome to be, but that doesn't matter. It is his outcome. What he sees. And I'm, I'm thankful that you see that. I have not known your pastor for any length of time. Uh, I wish I had known him for some time. I think I would have been a better person. I think he has that kind of uh, attitude, that kind of, that kind of feeling about him that's contagious. Yes, yes, that enthusiasm, that kind of empathy and sympathy, and you just can feel, you can feel his sincerity. And I, I wish I had known him much, much earlier, but I thank God for the time that I have come to know him. And I'm a better person. Somebody said, whenever you are in relationship with somebody, every meeting you have, listen over here, with someone, 
you ought to try to leave them better than when you first. So I, I approach my meetings in terms of an I thou. This is God's man here. He's God's child. And God put us together so we can learn from one another. So I can be better because of my meeting with you. Yeah, your pastor excels in that. Yeah, in my view. Yeah. And thank God he's in Camden. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You are an oasis in, in Canaan. Yeah. You are life right here in Canaan. Yes, you are. You are. There's a fountain right here, right here in Canaan. Yeah. In, in your church. You are that fountain. Yeah, and uh, I thank God for you, God for you, to be in Camden, Camden. Well, <clears throat> uh, Pastor, I like what you do with young people. When I was here, I, uh, I talked about the shalom. Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah about the shalom of, uh, of Easter, the shalom of Resurrection Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it helped me so much that when I came here, the fella, when he saw me, he said, shalom. I said, oh, God. And then I saw another chap, and he said, shalom. I said, wow. And I left here thinking that I had flunked a whole lot, but certainly with those two brothers, I had not flunked. I appreciate that a lot. Needed that encouragement. I like what you do with kids. I like your, your love for kids. I mean, I see that child holding on you there. That's, that's, that's who you are. I remember Cameron when I was here the last time. Yeah, that Cameron. And I asked one of the deacons, I said, how's Cameron doing? And he looked at me kind of funny. I said, well, I'm, I'm 81, but there are some things I don't forget. I, <laughs> when you get a youngster like that with his pastor and that sort of thing, you don't forget that. And uh, you don't forget those two girls he had come up here to to do something. He called on Cameron and called on and called on those two girls. And I asked the deacon, I said, what about those two girls? He said, when you came in, they were right there by the door and uh, and and they greeted you. You greeted them and they they returned the greetings. They they're, they're here. They're here. I said, wow. And isn't, isn't it interesting that I remember those two girls and that, that little fella? They tell me that little fella is, is gifted with, in technology. They tell me he, he, he's got, a, got, got something going on with this stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> that happens because, because of Pastor Britt. That happens because of Pastor Britt. All of the young people here, you have a pastor who, who loves you and who wants to get the best, the best for you and out of you. Yeah, yeah I like that. I like that. I like that. And uh, he's a brilliant fella. Brilliant young man. He talks about Wadsworth. I said, I don't know when I heard a 
preacher refer to Wadsworth. <laughs> Uh, they don't. They, they might. They might refer to to, to Johnson, James Weldon Johnson, or something, but not not Wordsworth. He's he's white, and but he was talking about the nature thing, and and how we need to have an appreciation for for nature. Yes, yes, yes. I like that. He's a he's somebody. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Now, you know, to have, um, to have your anniversary on Palm Sunday is quite a challenge for me. Because I, I you know, I, I, I'm, I'm old, I'm old school, and I got to deal with the fella on the, on the donkey going. <laughs> got to do that. So I, so I, I, I have to figure out a way how I can deal with, with, with the journey to Jerusalem and my, my Lord on the donkey and, and, and this 17 years. So I think I have, I have something. Bow your heads with me. After those long preliminaries, uh, bow your head with me, please. Father, I need, I need you. Show sure enough, no question about it. I need you. I need you because your people, they are looking to your servant for encouragement, hmm. for a word from you. And I, I don't have it unless you give it. Hmm. And so Holy Spirit, hmm, my guide and leader, in Christ, use, use me, use us, us. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Well, <clears throat> I want to talk, Pastor, and listen carefully to this. I'm trying to bring the two together. A man who's been here for 17 years and also this journey to Jerusalem. I'm going to ask you to allow your mind and your spirit to join me to walk with the disciples on that road, on that road to Jerusalem with that donkey. He's not moving too fast, so, and you've been walking a lot, so. It's no real challenge to you. You might have to hold me up, but uh, Jesus is on the donkey, going to Jerusalem. He's got disciples around him. He has this crowd of people uh, waving palms and throwing their clothes behind him, you see. And uh, I'm asking you, two of us to just get in one of these time machines or some, some device of imagination and let's go back. I want you to go to Bethany. That's not too far away uh, because Jesus came from Bethany and, and got hooked up with a donkey it looked like it was a setup. Yeah, he, he, had, he had a donkey in place waiting for this particular use. Yeah, so I want you to, and, and I want the folks, if y'all can, use your imagination. You've heard this story again and again, 
and maybe you might want to join a pastor and I as we walk uh, with Jesus who's on the donkey going to Jerusalem yeah I want you to do that I need, you, need you to do that it's just a little imagination colored folks used to have a lot of imagination Say it. Uh, as, as somebody said Hi, how's your imagination how's your imagination how's your imagination don't lose that honey yeah, keep your imagination going. Yeah, that's where poets are born. Yeah, yeah, poets are born in the world of imagination. Yeah, yeah, that's where, that's where, where the Bedford story, Pilgrim's Progress, John, in imagination. You can get out of prison if you've got some imagination. I like that, I like that. So I need y'all, I need all of y'all, if you will, to join Pastor and I, but I'm, in, I'm taking Pastor uh, to that point in Bethany, just outside of Jerusalem, not too far where Lazarus and his sisters live. He used to visit there and uh, wanted to spend a little time there and then we're gonna go to, to, to Jerusalem after they bring that donkey to Jesus to ride on. And pastor is going to be there. He's strong. Look how strong he is, tall. And yet I like that. I like that. And uh, this 81-year-old guy, you're going to have to help me a little bit, son. You know, yeah, because some of that rocks and stones along the way, you know. And uh, I'm going to need a hand. Yeah. But we want to walk with Jesus. And then I'm going to, I'm going to be pointing to some things about about Jesus on this journey that might be helpful to you. Yeah, and helpful to us. Uh, that, uh, that's, that's, that's my layout. That's the device I'm using. That's, that's, that's my literary, my literary uh, approach to this. Okay, imagination going back. Bethany Pastor is with me. I'm with Pastor. We're going to walk with Jesus. And I know the donkey is not going to walk that fast. That's all right. <clears throat> Chapter 12 in the Gospel of John. Chapter 12. Jesus had uh, raised this fellow Lazarus from the dead. Four days this guy had been dead. You know the story. Raised him from the dead. Can you imagine how powerful and what impact that would have on everybody in Bethany? Everybody around Bethany? This guy who had been dead for four days. This fellow from Nazareth, Galilean, this itinerant preacher, this wonder worker, he did a lot of stuff, a lot of miracles, but four days, he raised a guy who had been dead for four days. Wow! Wow, that's front page stuff. I mean, New York Times got it. Everybody, Daily News got it. Everybody got it. Everybody got it. But watch this. This is happening during the Passover. During the Passover. And Passover means that this is one of the festivals that Jews in diaspora, Jews dispersed, would be coming from all over to Jerusalem to observe and to celebrate 
Passover. So there are a whole lot of pilgrims, a whole lot of folks going to Jerusalem. And Jesus just raised this guy from the dead. Look at that. There are a lot of folks, a lot of folks, a lot of folks, a lot of folks. A miracle has taken place. A miracle of miracles taken place, taken place. Lazarus. Lazarus becomes a mocked man because he provides living evidence of the power of Jesus. That when you listen to me, you, 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 son, when Jesus works on you, when he performs miracles in your life, through your life, yeah, not only are folks upset with Jesus, son, listen to me, they're upset with you. And they're upset with, Satan especially is upset with you because you are living evidence about who he is. And so Lazarus became a mock man. Come on, pastor. I want you to go into the house and see Lazarus at the table. And I'm shaking my head just like you. This man was dead for four days <laughs> yeah yeah and everybody ought to be clapping and whatever and most folks are but you got a few folks who want to kill him <laughs> you see that Reverend you see that 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 Brit see that yeah that's the first observation I want to make yeah and, and right after that, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, back, let me read a little bit in this story here. My wife told me, she said, now, you don't have a watch on your wrist, but watch me so you won't be up there too long. <laughs> 12, 12, chapter 12, St. John Verse 12, the next day, the next day, the next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, Passover, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. Uh, sitting on a donkey's coat. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead, they bore witness. For this reason, the people came, the people, for this reason, the people also met him because they had heard that he had done this sign. And the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, listen to this folks, you see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. I like that. And I'll stop right there. Stop right there. And so pastor, I want us to travel, you and I, we spent a little time in, in Lazarus' house in Bethany and said, wow, what a man. Yeah, what a man. Now, he's, he's on this donkey going to Jerusalem. I said, 
Pastor Britt, isn't it interesting about his mode of travel? Just like he had a donkey, he could have arranged to have one of the healthy Arabian stallions. He could have worked that out easily. But he chose, son, he chose a donkey, a donkey. Listen to me, it doesn't matter in my view what you're traveling on. Come on, sir. It's who the traveler is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the donkey is an animal worthy of great and high regard, certainly in that culture there. Mm -hmm. uh, but he used a simple animal. And so those of us who like to glorify in things, Pastor, I want to talk with you, you see, what he used there, he didn't use, didn't get a chariot, nothing like that. Just a donkey. Because it's, it's, not, it's not, not so much uh, the vehicle that you use yeah. as it is who it is who is in the vehicle. Mm. Yeah. Sweetheart, that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Things don't give me my worth. No, sir. No, sir. I'm God's child. Yeah. Right. And that's where my worth is. And so, Pastor Britt, let's look at the mode of travel. But something else, too, is in the mode of travel. It has to do with scripture fulfillment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what we do must all, listen to me, ma'am, must always be done in terms of the consciousness of scripture of rhema, of scripture. What does the word of God say? Yeah, that's, that's our journey as preachers. Yeah, as preachers. What, what is God? It's just fulfilling, and that's what Jesus would say. This is fulfilling the scripture. Don't, don't get outside of his word. Mm. Yes, yes. Come on, son. Go ahead now. Don't, don't do that, boy. Don't do that, son. You there. Mm. I mean, don't get so fancy with your philosophy. Don't, don't get so fancy listening to these heavy boys mm. that you have no regard for the prophet. Yeah. yeah, because Socrates and Plato and the rest of them going to pass away. And, and even if they are remembered in our introductions to philosophy, those biographical statements have no power to help me on my journey. Am I right about it? Yeah, so to me, I, I, think, I think fulfilling that scripture is, is, makes sense. It makes, and I look at this youngster here, you son, you look so strong and whatever. Yeah. Get some scripture in your belly. Yeah, get some scripture in your head. And, and live with it. And say like the psalmist said, your word have I hidden my heart that I will not sin against you. 
So Pastor Brett, <coughs> let's look at the vehicle. <coughs> Nothing fancy. But also let's always be reminded that it's scripture fulfillment. Yeah. <coughs> look at him, Pastor. He's going to Jerusalem. And, uh, and the people around him, yeah. <clears throat> is he going to a coronation? Y'all call him king. Mm. Yeah, listen, pastor, <clears throat> there is, listen to me, pastor. I know you know this, but I got to drive it home to you. He is going to Jerusalem, but not for a coronation. I mean, this crowd out here, you would think that it's a coronation calling him the king. There's no coronation waiting for him in Jerusalem. Don't let the crowd define the meaning of your journey. do that I I can't do don't you would think that listen man you would think that all that noise folks are making all of this Hosanna stuff and whatever and waving palms and whatever that he's going to be come a king to be honored in Jerusalem not so not so not so. And Pastor, Pastor Brett, as an old man, you cannot allow the palm waving and the Hosanna shouts to define your journey to Jerusalem. Pastor Britt, look in his eyes. Look at him. Look at him. He's not smiling. Look at, look at the determination on, on the face of Jesus. He's going, no smiles. No smiles. Because he told his disciples, Pastor Britt, that this trip to Jerusalem, what was going to happen to him? That the elders and the chief priests and uh, scribes, all of them will come together to eliminate him. Now listen, if, if he were to go and start smiling with what he knew was waiting to Jerusalem, it would not have been a normal, a normal posture. He knew what was waiting for him in Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. Pastor, look at him. He's a very serious man on his way to Jerusalem. No smiles, just determined. It looks like everybody has forgotten, the disciples have forgotten that I told them that this date in Jerusalem, this journey to Jerusalem was going to be so tragic. It looks like they forgot all about it. But I have not forgotten. Yeah. Pastor, let's stay with me. It's, it's a long walk and I got an arthritic knee. Can I hold on your shoulder? Yeah, I need your shoulder, son. You're a tall fella. Bend it down just a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen to this. Look at, listen to the folks uh, shouting Hosanna. Save and save now. 
We're messed up. I mean, we have corruption in the church. We have corruption in the temple. We have these guys who are chief priests and that, that fellow who is high priest. They can care less about us. We're divided. We got the Herodians. We got, we got the Zealots. We got the Pharisees. We got the Sadducees. We got the Essenes. We're divided. Save us. Save us. House divided against itself. Save us. And they're crying, save us. You're the only one I, I've heard about got a message for everybody. Wow. You don't confine your message to rich folks. You got time for poor folks. Save us. Is this the moment? They didn't understand. They thought that maybe this might be the moment. They didn't understand. And people, the masses of people, they're just like those folks shouting hosannas. They're hurting. Yes, yes, yes. Fix it, fix it. And, and they're tired of the hurt, boy. Tired of the hunger. Tired of the oppression. Tired of it. Save. Save now. Yeah, yeah. Fix it, fix it. Jesus, I'm sure he said in his spirit, I, I hear y'all. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. And it's on God's agenda. But right now, we got some other business to take care of. Palms. Clothes, throwing their clothes. I mean, off my back. Man, I, and anything I wouldn't do, I'll give you the clothes off my back. Clothes on my back. You hear that say? Clothes on, because I think that much of you. And they did that. Yeah. Yeah, people are like that, Pastor. Pastor Brits, people are like that. That when you, when you represent some hope to them, we've had it in our history, the Daddy Graces and the Father Divines. They give you everything they got. Because they are crying out like that crowd. Save and save now. Mm. Oh God. Jesus. Oh God. This this is this is an awful moment for a preacher because listen to me. When folks get like that, you can exploit them. You can take advantage of them. That as they as they cry out, save, save. I see you as savior. I see you as my helper. I see you as the promised one. Sometimes preachers exploit that. There's a temptation. There's a temptation for every leader. Listen to me. There's a temptation for every leader, especially a spiritual leader, that when folks cry out, save me, you impose yourself as the savior. Am I right about it? Am, am I right about it? Am I, am I right about it? I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what con artists, that's what they do. And, 
And that's what cult leaders do. That's what cult leaders do. They take advantage of this, of this Hosanna that everybody has, looking for a leader, looking for a savior. And they move in in the place of the savior. Brick, that can't work, will not work. I'm not, I'm not your savior. No, he's, he's, that's your savior. Don't bow down to me. Yes, I, I, I got to bow down too. My, my job is to teach you the art of bowing down. That's what, that's what common sense folks do. You know, they, they don't they don't they don't take advantage of you bowing to me say no 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 oh no 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 God has blessed me God has blessed me and don't you try to mess my head up thinking that I I gotta be the object of your bowing I no sir no sir come here let me show you how to bow bow here here's how you do it bow yeah. Pastor, yeah, yeah, that, that Hosanna thing is something else. Hmm. But while you have Brit, Pastor Brit, listen, that while you have that, the guys out there with the Hosanna thing, and the children too, you have some other guys representing the chief priests. And they have a vested interest and, uh, uh, in what they're doing, the status quo. And uh, they said, what's happening here? Everybody seems to go crazy about him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're going crazy. They're following him. And Pastor Britt, you know what we have to do? We have to say, yes, that's what y'all got to do. You got to follow him. You, you, you got to follow him. Make sure that, that, that you follow him. When I preach, it's about you following him. Thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah. It's about you following him. Yeah. That's important. That's important. And that's important for... Pastor Britton, it's important for me to teach people how to bow, the art of bowing, to worship God, to worship God. But out there in the crowd, you're going to have some folks who will plan to shoot you down. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna do that. They're going to do that. And sometimes they're right in your midst. Yeah, sitting at your table. Shaking your hand, putting their arms around you, saying nice things but don't mean it, sharpening their daggers every chance they get, just put it in your back and whatever. Yeah, yeah, you're going to have that. You're going to have the schemas. Listen to me. If there is a devil and there is a devil, the devil has to be busy in his scheming and device making to get at folks who will be doing what Pastor Britt is doing. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And so if there is no devil on his case, uh, if there is no devil out in the audience yeah. who, got, who just sneaked in, <laughs> just, just sneaked in, I, I, I know you're not a part of us, but I know who you are. I, 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 I saw you the way you looked at me. I, I saw you. I felt your spirit. I know who you are. I, 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 I ought to throw you out, but I can't do that. Uh, my master told me not to do that, but I'm going to keep you around. But, 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 but my, my, my warriors, 
my prayer warriors and I, we're going to pray for you. We, oh, yeah. We're going to try oh, to get yeah. you in oh, yeah. because you're not, you're not one of us. I know it. You're trying to hurt me. The devil sent you to hurt me here. But I'm not going to give in to you because greater, greater, greater is he. Yeah, there, there. Yeah, yeah, that, that fella, that fella is going to try to, if, they, if he could, he would knock him off the donkey. I said, look, look, Britt, you see that guy over there? Yeah, he's a scribe. He can't stand Jesus. He's been a part of the intelligence squad of the Sanhedrin for some time. I know, I know who he is. He can't stand you. And he's been around and around. And look at him. They're getting in a little huddle right now. Listen to me. Listen, listen to me. You, ma'am, listen to me. Jesus, since you know that all of that's going on, are you going to stay on course? I mean, Jesus, you know all of this stuff that's going on. Britt and I just came here and identified it. I know you know about it. Are you going to stay on course or will you turn that animal around? Uh, no, Roman, you and Britt, destiny. Is calling me to Jerusalem. And I got to go. He said, but can't you see what they're scheming to do? And these guys are serious. They would blow you away if it weren't for the crowd around you here. He said, I know, Roman. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn this animal around. I'm going straight ahead to Jerusalem because there's a lot to be accomplished and I got a date with destiny. I whispered to Pastor Britt, can you handle that in your ministry? Can you handle it? When you're on your way to your Jerusalem and you know what's going on and then you see the schemers right there in the crowd. Hmm. Will you turn your, your donkey around? Hmm. Hmm. That's true for all of us. You know you have a date with destiny. Yeah. You're going to go on or you're going to turn around. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> Jesus, <clears throat> he keeps on going. Yeah. And then he comes to Jerusalem. I said, look at him, Britt. Look at him. Look at him. He, this is the first... His eyes are watery. Look at him. He's weeping, Brit. He's crying, Brit. He is crying, weeping because of what he sees in the city. My God. My God. Don't ask God to show you what he saw in the city because the tears will surely come. Yeah. Are you willing to let those tears come? I mean, look, look at it. Look at it. Don't, don't, the, the, the parable of the good Samaritan, don't, don't be like 
Don't be like the Levite. Don't. He saw the man down there. He saw the city. He saw the man down there in pain, half dead. He saw that. He saw him naked. He saw him bleeding. He saw that. But he acted like he didn't see it. And here comes the priest, all robed out, sharp. Sharp. I know he got two for one. Because I saw him in the store when I was getting mine. <laughs> Looking sharp and all of that. Priest. Priest. Passing him by. But then there was one fella who saw and who felt. And I think that's where the challenge is. Are we willing we certainly have the equipment within us, but are we willing to see and to feel and to shed tears? Ah, 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 Jesus! I see why you came here. You wanted to show us the great love that you have. Oh, Jerusalem! If you had only known, if you had only listened, if you had only obeyed Jerusalem, I came to you. I came to you on many occasions and you wouldn't listen, Jerusalem. Tears in his eyes. Look at him, Brent. Look at all the boys. Look at all of the unemployment. Oh! I want a job, but there ain't no jobs. Jesus. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. My kids in education, they're playing politics with my kids' education. Lord, nobody cares. No, yeah. nobody cares. Look at our streets full of drugs, crime, all tears. I can't handle it. Lord, tears. Jesus. A church without tears is a candidate. Mm. Is a candidate for punishment. Yes. 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 Mm. Jesus. Jesus. Can't you feel me? Mm. Can't you feel me? Yes. Can't you feel me? I'm out here hustling on the street. I saw you look at me all crazy. I'm out here hustling, trying to get a dollar so I could get some drugs so I could feel good. Jesus, Jesus. I got to have drugs to feel good. You don't need drugs to feel good. You got a good job. You got a good family, but I got to have some help. Why you look at me like that? Jesus. Why, you, why you treat me the way you do? The God who made you is the God who made me. Yeah, yeah. I want a, I want a family too. But I just can't get it together. What you gonna do for me? Jesus said, "I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry." And, and, and there is power in crying. Yeah, yeah, there's power in crying. Yeah, when you see what I'm going through, and when you feel what I'm feeling, the hurt and, and how I live every day in danger and whatever, when you, can you wear my water moccasin? I really don't have water moccasin. I got these old worn out slippers. Can you, can you put them on and see what I'm going through? Can't you feel it? Come, come on, boy. What kind of religion do you have that you can't, can't give you? Put, put the lens on. Look, maybe something's in your eyes. 
why don't you see your eye doctor? Maybe, come on boy, get, get, get the stuff out of your eyes and see what I'm going through. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at me, can't you see I'm hurting? Jesus said, you got to look at him. Brent, we got to look at him. We got to see them. And a whole lot of folks around us, they wonder if we're crazy. They wonder because they don't see. And those who see don't feel. Help me. Brit, help me. Help me. He wept. He wept. Yeah. So, Brit, you're going to have to tell the rest of the story. Wow. That journey to Jerusalem, what it meant, what that Friday meant. You got to tell that story. That's the rest of the week. You got to tell that story about, uh, about your Easter. Mm -hmm. You got to tell that story. It's all a part of this. <laughs> and then you got to tell that story about, about the Holy Ghost who's going to show up. And you got to tell that story. You got to tell that story that I'm coming back. You got to tell the story about the other chapter 19. In chapter 19, Luke, but there's a Revelation chapter 19. Yeah. And that's when the master comes the next time. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. he, said, uh, he said, thank you, donkey, for the ride before. But this time, I, I got to ride on a white horse. Yes, I'm not, not taking any stuff now, but now no, that's that's that Revelation 19 from 19 to 19. Yes, sir, uh, I'm coming, I'm coming back. But Pastor, that's your story, and I'm going to close because um, I I want to share with you this thing about uh, Don Quixote. You, you remember Don Quixote? Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I'm a Don Quixote. That, uh, that I'm, I suppose I'm sick in my head. And that's what they declared. That was the diagnosis of Don Quixote back then. Yeah. He said, I got to, I got to do all that I can to restore this world, to make it a better place, Don Quixote. And so he got a, got a jackass uh, to, be his, to be his animal to ride on. And, got his servant uh, to be his squire, and uh, he saw himself as the knight of challenge. Yeah, he went out there, uh, no real weapons, but weapons to him. Certainly no weapons compared to what was needed to correct things out there. But he, he went on, Don Quixote went on. No, no cannons, no, no real sword, no rifles, nothing. But he went on with what he had. I feel like Don Quixote sometimes. I look at what's going on in Washington. I, I feel like Don Quixote sometimes. I, I'm just a Louisiana country boy. Who in the world am I? I don't have very much going for me. Mama got on her knees and scrubbed white folks' kitchens all her life. I don't have anything. We, we got a break to go to school and uh, took advantage of that. But all of these great powers that exploited us all of these years, the Koch brothers and all these other folks and whatever and whatever, these billionaires have come together, but I learned this, that when God wants to make a move, <laughs> nobody can stop him. <laughs> I found that out. I found that out. I said, a friend of mine told me, he said, Obama is, is running. I said, who in the world is Obama? He said, he said, Obama, Obama is the guy who made the speech there in New York at the convention. I said, what? 
he must be crazy. Nobody can, I mean, come on, man. He said, God gave me a vision and this boy's going to win. I said, you sure it was God? <laughs> or, or maybe that was a nightmare. Yeah, or maybe that was a, 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 a Don Quixote dream. <laughs> maybe it was a Don Quixote dream. He said, look, I believe it, I believe it. And then this thing started working out and working out and working out and working out. I said, wow, it looks like something else is taking place here. It, I mean, I got all this heavy money there back there and billions of dollars lined up against him and all of that. How can this be? It's moving, it's moving. And I said, you know something, Reverend? I think God might be in this. He said, Roman, I told you God's in it. And so sure enough, listen to me, and so sure enough, God was in it. God was in it and, 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 and took this boy from nowhere. Took took this boy, this boy whose daddy ran away, this boy, this boy, Obama, bright kid, whatever, but who would have ever thought that he would become the president? Come on. Come on. Listen, listen to me. Don Quixote, I feel like Don Quixote, but when I look at Obama, I said maybe Don Quixote makes some sense uh, because there's still a God. So I said, well, he got, he, got, he got through the first four years, and, and, and maybe he ought to just hang it up, and, because he, he knows by now that, that, that a whole lot of these, these folks with all this money, they're against him. And he's, he said, no, Reverend, he's running again. He's running again. He's running again. He's running again. I said, what? He's running again. I said, well, well he said, if God did it, God can do it again. Yeah, yeah. He said, if God did it, God can do it again. And let me tell you something. God did it again. Yes, he did. And they don't like it. But when God opens a door for you, uh, nobody can close it. That's why I like that old boy, Don Quixote. Somebody was inspired to come up with that song. The dream to dream to dream to dream. The impossible dream. To fight mm, the unbeatable foe. Yeah. To bear with unbearable sorrow. And to run, to run where the brave dare not go. That's it. To write. Woo, yes. To write. The unrightable wrong and to love pure and chase from afar. To try when your arms, Pastor, are too weary. Mm. To reach the unreachable star. This is your quest. Yes, to follow that. Oh. Am I right about it? That's all right, sir. Am I right about it? Right. He'll take care of you as you follow that star. He'll work it out, Reverend. I know he will. I got over 50 years telling you that he'll make a way out of nowhere. I got over 50 years to tell you, Reverend, that when your enemies come upon you, yes. hey, 